Now once you have your logic probes connected up to your device under test and your Sele, you're going to open the Logic 2 application on whichever operating system you're using. First you're going to click on the device settings and recall that I skipped the probe zero because it was black and I didn't want to confuse myself with ground. So the things that I'm going to want enabled are one, which was connected to one, two, which is connected to two, three, I skipped four because it was connected to ground, and then I used five, six, and seven. So we don't need zero here, and we just need one, two, three, five, six, and seven. And then what you need to do is you need to name these. So by default, these are going to be, you know, ordered correctly for you. And you need to find the corresponding names in your data sheet. So you need to open up your data sheet. So my data sheet for this device under test is the Winbond 25Q128JW. And notice that it says here it's a 1.8 volt part. So typical SPI flash chip voltages are either 1.8 volts or 3.3 volts. So make sure that the appropriate voltage is selected in your device settings, depending on which chip you're using and which data sheet you're looking at. And then also right here, you select how often the system is sampled. So 500 million samples per second, 250 million, and so forth. 250 should be fine for the speed we're operating at. If you need, you can up it to you know 500, but typically that's not going to be necessary. So again, we need to name these channels, which will you know default to just channel one, channel two, etc. We need to name them according to our data sheets. So we need to go see what this was set to. I'm gonna scroll down until you find the physical configuration. And so again, I you know specifically connected probe one to channel one to pin one just so that I would know exactly and you know make it easier to not confuse myself. So this is the chip select. This is the active low. That's what the little slash means. It means it's an active low signal. So this is chip select, and the chip is selected when it is at low voltage. We've got uh, data out. We've got write protect ground, data in clock and hold or I/O three. So we said that, you know, there's many different names for these data in, data out, and so forth. So the CS, I'm going to name that slash CS for active low chip select. I'm also going to put enable here because later on there's going to be an analyzer that uh, uses the term enable. So this just makes it quick and easy for me to find the enable line. Then we have peripheral out controller in. So this was called, so D2 was called data out or IO1. And so we're calling it IO1. It's also known as peripheral out controller in or the legacy term of MISO, master in slave out. So we said that term's deprecated, but the analyzers again will call it MISO. And so I'm putting it there just to make it easier to find it when I'm asked to select different lines. So the slash WP, the write protect line, also known as IO2. And we have D5, this was data in. So that data in would be peripheral in, controller out, or master out, slave in. So MOSI or PICO or IO0. And D6 is, uh, sorry, channel six is clock. And pin seven is hold, active low, or IO3. So now that we've got all of those selected, what we can do is we can just go ahead and power on our device and we're going to see the data start streaming in here. So to do that, I hit this start button and then you'll see the line start analyzing and I scrolled out to see that this uh, data is not changing right now because the device is not powered on. So I'm going to power it on and there you can immediately see all sorts of data coming in and it's oscillating between high and low so quickly that it just looks like a, you know, uh, blob. So then we go ahead and hit stop, and then we can trim our data. So I'm going to go ahead and click at the top here. I'm going to right click and say delete data before the marker, because this is all just nothing going on there. And I'm going to click after the last data, and then I'm going to right click and say delete data after the marker. And so now this is restricted just to the range of uh, information that looks valid. And so if I scroll in on this, you know, I could scroll in on the very first thing. Sorry, my scroll's too fast here. I'm going to switch to my other mouse that scrolls more slowly. If I scroll in on this one, we can see that there is not actually any real or valid data going on. It's just level transitioning. So I scroll back out and then I scroll in on this next one. 
And here we can see that it looked like a, a flat line there, but it's actually some data that's just uh, compressed down. So if I scroll in on that, then what I see is system, we've got the clock oscillating as expected. We've got some data coming in on peripheral in, controller out. So data coming in there first, and then data going out from peripheral out, controller in on this line later. You can also see that, you know, there's a little bit of a potential glitch here. There's just some little quick transition that seems smaller than all the other transitions. So that's okay, that one in this case shouldn't actually affect our data, but that can occasionally affect your data, and if it is, you may need to use this glitch filter option. So glitches will occur, you know, due to, for instance, just uh, bad wiring, or that kind of thing. So, okay, at this point we've got some data, it looks to be, you know, valid, but we're not going to really know until we analyze it. So I'm going to want to analyze this on a different system where I can use the uh, quad spy analyzer. So I'm going to go ahead and save this capture so that I can analyze it later. So go ahead and do that, get your initial capture, save it, and then we'll come back and do the analysis next.